people who go into the to the children of this county. They need the best education they could possibly get. And to do that, you need the best people in place. I suggest that the person you put in place has experience in the classroom. As somewhere in his uh, or her um, experiences, they've been before 20 or 30 children, so they have an idea of what the teachers are going through. I suggest that the board itself does not rush this appointment. I know there are time constraints, but these constraints are secondary to what is necessary for our children and our school system to have. Now I know it is not in fashion to mention Christian values, and I doubt very much if you could even put it on the application, because somebody somewhere would say this is not appropriate. And I'm not talking about the inappropriate, I'm talking about representing the people of this county. I would hope that the person that you put in could reflect the values that we all endorse and the ones that we believe in. I hope that you can see this kindness in the person, because this is very, very important. We are living in criminal times. Also, I would like to ask, I've heard of Close the Gap. I want to close the gap between the superintendent and the board, between the superintendent and the parents, and the superintendent and the teachers. He should be, or she should be, very accessible. I know it's very hard and time demanding job, but this is important. And last of all, I ask and plead for diversity. When I say diversity, I mean exactly that. That you examine every candidate and consider them in, in what they have, what they know, for the job, leave no one out. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. 
Chairman and board members, as you know, I've submitted several requests to the board seeking information regarding various actions and expenditures <coughs> made by the board and CCS personnel. While I've received some information in the form of public records, there's been no real attempt to completely answer my questions. Your responses thus far indicate that you are not legally obligated to answer except to provide access to public records. While your position may be technically accurate, I do believe you have a moral obligation to the taxpayers of Cleveland County to justify your actions and your expenditures. I understand some of you believe most of the citizens of Cleveland County don't care about what's happened in the past and they're going to move on. You can see by the number of people gathered here tonight that the citizens of Cleveland County do indeed care about what their school board is doing. I encourage the board members to talk to the folks after the meeting and hear their concerns firsthand. And for the guests here, I encourage you to be polite and be willing to express your opinion uh, to the board. In the last two weeks, copies of several questionable receipts have been published online and discussed on the local cable TV channel. Since this has happened, I understand there may be a few more board members interested in looking into the expenditures. We encourage you to do so. We realize that an audit and investigation will be embarrassing to those who have done things improperly. We're sorry for that, but we didn't talk these things to take place. It would be nice to have all of this taken care of before the new superintendent gets here. We should clean up our own mess. <laughs> to use a popular cliche, we're all in this together. The board is elected by the citizens of Cleveland County to oversee the education of our children and the operation of the school system. You represent us and are responsible to us to see that everything is done properly. When you fail to do what's right, you fail the students, the teachers, and the citizens. My recommendation to the board is that you do whatever is necessary to audit the question, questionable credit card purchases. CCS has an internal auditor on staff that should be able to perform or oversee this work. The board should also ask the district attorney to proceed with action on the SBI report that was generated as a result of the investigation of the school system purchase. I'm still seeking a response to the questions I submitted to the board on January 13th. Other than the questions about the expenditures, it should only take a few hours to answer the other questions. Please keep in mind that there are no concerns beyond the credit card purchases. Citizens are concerned about the condition of our school buildings, prioritization of capital projects, and perceived favoritism of personnel actions. I know you take selection of the new superintendent seriously. You should definitely consider what your selection will give the citizens of Cleveland County. Thank you. students 
at earlier grade levels. She or he should encourage the use of multiple and diverse assessments that tap individual skills in different ways. This person should be a team builder who recognizes faculty and staff who are successful at closing the gap and endeavor to replicate those programs that do work. Our staff should be applauded for what works, but we also are looking for someone who is willing to provide professional development to assist teachers and faculty and to distinguish between behavior and academic ability. Lastly, our superintendent should be an effective community partner. This person should recognize community programs such as the annual education summit and youth summits. Both help to raise awareness and, and to allow community leaders to engage in this conversation. As a business leader and product of Cleveland County Schools, I recognize the importance of keeping the community abreast of this issue. As you choose our next superintendent, I urge you to select an individual who recognizes that this is a war on closing the gap. President Lyndon B. Johnson declared this war 50 years ago. We must now press forward with a leader who can galvanize, empower, and direct our school system to even greater success in this world.
over 2,300 employees, a large fleet of vehicles, an operating budget of $150 million. You can't have them not interface with businesses, charities, universities, and others to get the message out. I believe continuation of diversity and inclusion process is a must do for the next superintendent. In 2010, as recommended by the members of the community, the superintendent and many others formed this group. Chairman <coughs> Reverend Lamont Lilljohn states that a collaborative effort, this collaborative effort, has helped to increase hiring of minorities for three consecutive years. And added, an added benefit of this has been it's allowed us to dialogue on the issue of diversity. This has been a good thing. And we have grown in our understanding of challenges when the broader definition is applied. For example, the North Carolina Historically Underutilized Businesses Office Report for the first quarter of 2014 points out this, that in Cleveland County, $4.2 million was spent for goods and services in our county. And only 3.4% of that went to historically underutilized businesses. When we take out white females, only 2.3% of that went to historically underutilized minority businesses. The way we do business impacts the economic status of families and children. It is sometimes shelters wealth and puts additional financial strain on other systems like health, like human services, like judicial, like law enforcement and housing. We cannot disconnect the financial decisions of this institution and the growing number of poor people of color in our community. Diversity and inclusion must be an important attribute of the next leader. Thank you. in higher level positions in the Cleveland County school system. I believe this can be done, can be accomplished through the implementation of more cultural related job fairs, marketing techniques, and through social media. When selecting the next superintendent, I believe that it is relevant that these efforts can lead to more African American and other minority employment and leadership positions in the Cleveland County school system. More professional development workshops should center on issues that are important to African Americans and other minorities, such as race relations, attacking property, improving the quality of economic development, and equal education of our children. By employing more African American and other minority staff in leadership positions, we increase awareness for minority students, instilling in them leadership values and goals, not limiting their dreams for success. Currently, our workforce reflects an underrepresentation of minority hiring in leadership positions by providing workshops to better equip our current instructors for leadership and promoting within our system, the Cleveland County School System could better balance the leadership workforce. Thank you for this opportunity to address the school board on this very important issue. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ann Jeanette Holmesley. I am a retiree from the Cleveland County School System. My time
topic of concern is recruitment, hiring, promotion of staff, practices of policies and procedures. Board policy 5010 directs the superintendent or designee to be actively involved in recruitment efforts that are aligned with diversity in the name areas and should be reflected in our current data. While progress has been made, we all must continue our efforts with diversity. Reflections, images, and what we really see are also real to us. <coughs> There is a saying, the proof is in the pudding. In the 21st century, our statistics and data reflect what is actually in the pudding and the <coughs> ingredients we use. Our school board and community must continue to be intentional in our efforts aligning and developing practices, policies, and procedures that address our global society. As we search for a new superintendent, he or she must understand and embrace the need of diversity in recruitment, promotion policies, and procedures. Our diversity committee has been great with our present superintendent and our board chair. Hopefully, our concentrated efforts will continue. Cleveland County Schools has successfully educated our students for the 21st century. If we have homegrown our students with best practices, why not give them a chance to give back to our community? Some graduates qualified applied for Cleveland County Schools, not hired, that moved on to make other school systems shine. I would like to see more diversity, professional development, leadership, and inclusion of our population for employment in Cleveland County. Through job fairs, marketing and techniques, and social media, media, these efforts can be successful. If we continue to work together and we all are held accountable, we can ensure positive results with our efforts in recruitment, hiring, promotion of staff, and alignment in practices and procedures. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, school board members. I'm Eddie Holbrook, representing the Cleveland County Commissioners tonight. My reason for appearing tonight is to stress how important education is to our community. It is the foundation that establishes the direction this county will go in the future. You are facing a difficult and exhaustive search. We as a county just have experienced this with the search for a county manager. I would encourage you as you go forward to do some of the following. Be visionary and open-minded. Agree to disagree, but when the final decision comes, agree to agree and help us as a county to move forward in a positive way. To work in a thorough, harmonious effort as you attempt to work through some issues as you move forward. And lastly, you are in a position of leadership and you are elected to lead. Our citizens and this community are looking to you for strong, positive leadership. The image that is projected by the school board just as the image that is projected by the county commissioners is extremely important. Economic development prospects and other entities want to identify with counties and communities that are working together to improve the schools, law enforcement, law enforcement health care, and the quality of life for our people. Our hope is that you will secure not only a superintendent that takes our educational system to another level, but you will also join all our boards and agencies in creating a positive and visionary climate for the future of this county. Thank you very much.
thank you for this opportunity to speak. Uh, I know that changes cannot be made overnight. But what I would like to see happen in our superintendent is that some statistical information be brought to the forefront and make it a priority for the state of North Carolina, for the uh, for Cleveland County uh, in our education statistics. Uh, in September of 2003, uh, 2013, statistics were uh, taken from the uh, reports were taken from the United States Federal No Child Left Behind Act, which allows the U.S. Department of Education to determine how every public school and school district in the county is performing academically according to results on standardized tests. These tests show that Cleveland uh, County performs, underperforms the state average in education. It also shows that Cleveland County Schools has more SAT average than North Carolina overall. As I stated, changes cannot be made overnight, but I would hope our superintendent, our new superintendent, will be able to change these statistics, make it a priority to change these statistics that shows up on the internet in the uh, Cleveland County Schools uh, report from that uh, no school left behind performance. However, it did say that there are people with more bachelor degrees in Cleveland County than any other county. So what's wrong with this picture? We got more people with degrees, but we're not making the SAT points. So I'd like to see those changes made as a priority uh, uh, since we are going for a, a, a new superintendent who's going to make all these changes and to consider a lot of comments that have been made. Thank you. Thank you.
let's get on with business and continue to be outstanding people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, School Board. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk tonight. Thank you very much. I have a prepared statement, and uh, I'm excited. I'm going to just talk about so. um, I hope that we can uh, clear up all the problems that we have that have been generated in the past couple of years. And I'm sure y'all have made every effort to do so. And I look forward to having a clean slate and having a good and new superintendent who has a lot of integrity and he works with our teachers and he works with our school kids and gives them a decent and dependable education that they can use later in their life. And I look forward to y'all's decision and I applaud y'all for all the work that you've done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Discussion. The motion has been uh, made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? If 
not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Now we come to the real business of the meeting tonight. The meeting of the meeting. And we're happy to welcome with us the North Carolina School Board Association, Scott Murray, who's been working with us, as you all know. The North Carolina School Board Association makes sure that we consider all candidates who apply from the United States and foreign countries if they so decide. Uh, and uh, they're doing an excellent job. And this is the first start to announce the findings of the online survey and the comments. Scott, I'll turn it over to you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening. Uh, I have some handouts for the board. Because the purpose of tonight's meeting is to uh, present the results from the staff and community online survey. Uh, the board members were emailed these results last week, uh, but I have hard copies for you. We're going to share the results with the community, your staff, and everyone else tonight. Okay, so then we've had uh, you know, at least two instances, two instances like tonight where you have to hear directly from your public. Um, you also had a very good response from your online surveys. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the people here tonight which have also filled out an online survey. Um, so I'll do my best to uh, give you an overview and a summary of those survey results. Um, and you have already had the time and will have further time to, to look through those in detail. We got Greg on the slides there. Okay, so uh, total numbers. Um, and again, this is, you guys are a pretty large school system with a good size community, but these are very good numbers, actually, relative to some of the other searches we've done. Um, so that's a credit to the school board. I think that's a credit to your staff, to the media. Um, everyone did a great job getting the word out and letting the public and your staff know that they can go online, go to your website, and provide their input. So from the community, you had a total of 455 uh, people that started the survey. And 355 actually finished the survey. That's not uncommon, especially with um, some of the longer questions. That's still about 80 percent. And for the staff, you had 681, which is a great number. That's one of the highest we've seen as far as staff participation goes. Uh, 630 finished the survey. I think you'll see at the bottom, you had over 200 comments from your community and your staff. Um, so that shows a lot of people had a lot to say and they wanted to make sure that uh, you guys were aware of, of their um, thoughts on the, the next superintendent. Uh, again, the comment numbers were, were very high as well. Uh, there was also a letter sent to the board members that we included with your materials, uh, but that did not officially count as a survey response. And again, you've heard the public comments from these two meetings. So hopefully, I know it's a lot to digest in a short amount of time, but hopefully, uh, these resources will help you through it. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail into the actual comments part of the survey tonight. It's, it's almost impossible to characterize or summarize the other comments. Um, but again, those are available for you guys to read in detail. And those comments are going to be made available to the public uh, in redacted form. Uh, by law, we do have to take out any direct re references to personnel or uh, personnel titles. So they will be redacted, but um, those will be available to the public tonight and I believe on, on the website later this week. So moving on to the actual survey answers. Um, again, you have the detailed results in your materials and there's also a really helpful document that our staff put together, um, the survey summary document, which is only a few pages long. So you guys can follow along with that as I'm going through the, the PowerPoint. So the first question asked, um, again, the same survey was given to staff. So the first question asked was, what are the top strengths of Cleveland County Schools? 
Uh, I think that's a good sign that both your staff and community think that the teachers and their uh, school personnel are the strongest part of Cleveland County Schools. Uh, also, you'll see a lot of consistency in these answers. Uh, the top four are actually the exact same, and two and three are, are swapped. But uh, they're very proud of student achievement of the community, the good facilities, and you'll see community uh, include the support of parents. Not surprisingly, that was number seven for your staff. And then number five for your staff, available resources was number six for your community. So the first question told you what people were proud of, including that schools. Now the next question uh, asked, what skills and expertise would you like to see in your next superintendent? Again, not surprisingly, communication is, is key. And I think you heard some of that in the comments earlier tonight. So the number one response overall in your community and staff was communication with parents and community. And you can see the exact numbers on your, on your survey before the summary report. Uh, educational leadership is also a very important trait and an important skill that they would like to see. Uh, public relations skills, that kind of goes along with communication skills. We want someone who will involve the, the community, involve the staff in decision making. Number four for staff, organizational leadership. Uh, that makes sense from your staff, they want an organized leader. Uh, that was number seven for your community. Number four for the community uh, was number eight for the staff. And then number five is the same. Uh, the first staff is student five. So the next question asked about what traits would you like to see in the next superintendent? Again, you have a lot of consistency here between your community and staff. Uh, that's a good sign that your, your staff and your community are on the same page overall. So again, high student achievement is big. Values and employees is also very important. Those were the top two. Uh, integrity is, is key as well. You'll see both also put commitment to the community. So again, very consistent answers. And um, you have the detailed numbers for you on the summer. So the last question in this survey essentially asked the survey participant to rank uh, the from one to four, I believe, uh, to rank the, the statements in, in order of importance. You can see, the four meant that that was mandatory, that was very important. The three meant important, but not quite mandatory, and then it goes down to less important. So basically, we took all those numbers and fed them into a system to pick out the top, uh, I believe, 14 responses. So the next slide. So as far as what experience does your community and staff want to see in a superintendent, again, we have a lot of congruity. Uh, classroom teacher is number one. And again, I think you heard that tonight. They want someone who's familiar with the classroom, who's been a teacher before. Um, that is very high up on, on both lists. Financial experience was slightly higher for the community. I believe that was number six for your staff as far as uh, finance and budgets. You'll see the staff valued um, a, a doctorate or a, a higher education degree slightly higher than your community. Uh, both valued experience as a principal. Again, so I think you know overall someone who's been in the classroom, someone who runs school, uh, that background is going to be key when you're looking for your next superintendent. Uh, curriculum and instruction, also high, number four on both lists. And you'll see um, kind of interesting the staff put a little bit higher value on experience as assistant superintendent, uh, whereas the community would like to see experience as a superintendent with proven record success. Now, of course, all of these would be great, and it's probably going to be hard to find a candidate with experience at all these separate levels, but this shows you sort of what your staff and community thought to be the most important. So we also asked the community uh, just about general demographics, so you can get an idea of, of who you're hearing from in the community. Um, you'll see uh, almost all live within Cleveland County, and you also have a very high number of responses uh, from parents. So that shows very good parent involvement in the process. Uh, we also had you know, almost 50 students. That's also a good sign that your students are very interested in who their next leaders may be. Uh, you had over 100 without a school-aged child, some retirees, uh, lots of business community, business leaders. Uh, and 
Uh, political office is the last category there. No, maybe hard to read on the slide. Uh, then the last question as far as demographics go, uh, if you were a parent, essentially what uh, school did they go to? And you have a pretty normal breakdown there with uh, elementary, middle, and high school and pre-K. So again, I think it was um, a short survey, but I think hopefully it was very effective and hopefully you guys can, can take that and help it shape your own ideas of what to look for in a superintendent. And so that transitions us into the next part of this um, process. So now that you've heard from the community members, you've heard from your staff members, um, you've seen what they value, I guess now is probably the best time for the board to speak up and, and let us know what you're looking for in a superintendent. Uh, I will point out that the board is, is still receiving applications. Uh, you guys have not seen any applications at this point, and we do that on purpose. I think it's a good idea to go ahead and kind of set your leadership profile before you actually go through the applications. And what we'll do is we'll take your input from tonight and create a rating chart. And then that way, when you're going through the applications and when you're interviewing candidates, you'll have a rating chart of, you know, we're looking for classroom experience, we're looking for, you know, visionary, et cetera. And that way you can just check off the marks and hopefully it'll be a good time for you to use as you're reviewing those candidates um, in a couple weeks. So if you'll excuse me, rating chart over. Going from the, the new school technology to the old school technology. Um, also, please forgive my handwriting. I'm a, a former teacher myself, and my students complain all the time about my handwriting. So I apologize for that. Uh, so I love the board. Uh, I've been hearing from the beginning staff for you looking forward to next I've got a question before we start that. You, you said that some of the survey, some of the people that responded answered some of the questions but did not complete all the questions. That's correct. Those that answered some of the questions, were there answers to those questions counted even if they didn't finish? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because if they didn't finish, uh, whatever questions they did answer were correct. Good question. I was a little uh, unsure of how to take the uh, numbers there on the question about the uh, First question, uh, I live in the Cleveland County School System attendance area. Uh, we had 247 of the 455 that said they live in the school system, which uh, kind of makes me wonder about the 200 people who filled out the applicant and filled out the form that indicated they didn't live in our school district. Right. Um, I can't speak to my guess is that uh, people just might not have answered that question. Um, or it may show that there is some interest outside of the county. Um, That's 45% of the dedicated that is the system. We will look into those numbers, but uh, I think uh, if, if they are off, we'll get back to them. But I think it will just be people who didn't necessarily select that and have to answer it and have that question in detail. That would be great. We'll follow up. I think amongst my many um, exciting qualities that I want in the superintendent, number one is communication. I think that's important to me. Um, a member of the community and um, a lot of community um, to know what's going on. Um, I think transparency is great in communication. I think one of my top qualities, just one of my top.
close the tree. Say someone with experience, someone who values diversity, and diversity of all, all facets.
we would respect the request that we approve that contract so that we can continue further. If you have any questions, I can then have a response to this.
very unusual, but that's one of the reasons we did put in place uh, before I ever became part of the Clinton County School to the plan, and we use it occasionally. Uh, with that in mind, we've analyzed the data, and we believe that it would be appropriate for the need to waive the data missed by burn zone. They have certainly got enough hours accumulated that they do not have to make that time up. With the caveat that if we should miss additional weather, and I just know the weather report came in here a few minutes ago and it looks like we may be out of the woods uh, for tomorrow morning and we'll for some weather in the morning. But if we should miss additional days, uh, and we draw our eye out at 4 o'clock in the morning and ride around the roads again and have the call school, we may have to uh, take another plan there. We've got half designated May 10 as a makeup day already in the event that the district uh, misses additional days, but we recommend that you would uh, late that day enough hours in excess of the required hours that they would be responsible <coughs> What's the pleasure for me? I want to make a comment. Um, as I've looked over these survey results, and Mr. Blanton actually uh, mentioned it earlier, my concern is that the poor, that for some reason we still think we're going to approve your results and um, taking those into consideration, the, the burn zone seems to feel like that they are slighted in some way a lot, and I don't want really them to feel like that they were minus four hours on the other system. So, could you address that issue for, for me? I mean, oh, because the other three high schools and zones got four extra instructional hours, and it's about instruction. They did, and if that is the which is the board, we will make a combination of three languages. They will have a missed four hours left, but they are still in excess of the required 1,025 hours that the state required. <coughs>
And so that's what we can expect from the out Saturday is to be that kind of attendance. Or uh, as this, I think as the spring uh, goes on and we move towards summer, it would be even less. We don't have parents and students who have opportunities to do things that they're involved on Saturday. So we know that to be the case. Uh, we hope we won't have to use the right hand today. But that gives you kind of a perspective on how it falls out when we do have a Saturday school. It was pointed out to me that that is the weekend of Mother's Day. So uh, there's a lot of mothers that are not very happy that we may have to go to school. It's also so, the weekend of one of our clients. Well, I just wanted to, you know, I, I'm in no way trying to, I just wanted to make sure that Any further discussion? <coughs> if not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion to approve the superintendent's recommendation on my Burns Snow. No. Snow. Next on the agenda is the student transfer request, which is called Ad Again for Project of the Week. What's the pleasure of the board? Thank you all for coming.